some of the sweetest songs in the world are the songs that people sing to the everyday things about them. Undoubtedly, you've heard the one that goes, Can she bake a cherry pie, Billy boy, Billy boy? Can she bake a cherry pie, charming Billy? And the one that goes, Alive, alive, oh, alive, alive, oh, crying cockles and mussels, alive, alive, oh. But have you ever heard the one that goes, Soup is the secret of good living. Soup is the secret of good living. From the wealth of the earth and the wealth of the sea, with spice and herbs so savory, a favorite food. Down through history, soup is the secret of good living. Soup is the secret, the secret of good living. Food songs are part of the folk heritage of all nations and universal in delight. Everything goes into the kettle. Delicacies ancient and delicacies recent alike. ever cooked a steak over an open fire? Ever watched the sizzle of the juices from the meat lost falling into the flames? You've shared the feelings of the primitives who wanted to save those flavors. What a pity to spend all those drippings on the brightness of blazings and cracklings of the fire. You can save some of the juices by roasting. But you can capture more of them, and really most of them, by cooking the meat or fowl with some water in a kettle. And that's how soup began. Soup was a discovery destined to interest people of all ages. Juices good to the taste and good for the taster. Soup wholesome and healthful, and enjoyed by all. Old songs, old rhymes tell the theme of joyful soup. Sipping soup gave a wholesome feeling. Old Hippocrates, the father of medicine, recommended it to patients old and young. Chefs, old and modern, have taken soup far beyond those early days. The key to the kettle is flavor. Flavor to loosen the appetite, to quicken the enjoyment of all food. So, seasonings were added. Herbs and spices and cereals, then vegetables. Some recipes were secret. Let the kettle smile, says an old recipe of the Greeks, meaning merely to simmer the soup, to let her chuckle. Bean soup and pea soup, two of our favorites today, were also favorites of the Romans. Sometimes served thick enough to cut. A woman who can't make soup should not be allowed to marry 
throughout history, that thought has persisted. In the Middle Ages, the bride prepared a kettle of soup for the wedding feast, but the groom wasn't allowed to taste it until after the vows were spoken. And then it was too late to do anything about it. The Song of Soup, softly singing and simmering, is a song of good living. When was it served first as a separate course? There's no telling. In all its Elizabethan elegance, England was limited to a spoon and a knife, and usually sat down to a one-piece dinner, cooked in one kettle, served on one plate to be eaten at one time. The broth was sopped up separately with slices of bread. The bread so used was called sops. Some men of history tell us that is where the word soup came from. A second course of slices of meat, or the joints themselves, was served in a bowl they called a trencher. Manners were different then. Wide travel broadens our horizons, especially in points of etiquette and styles of food. The Italians gave the English the fork. And the cooking Chinese gave Marco Polo, the Italian man of travel, the noodle. Back in Italy, it became spaghetti, macaroni, and other pasta. In Peru, the Spanish conquistadors discovered the tomato, without which there would be no self-respecting minestrone and no universally loved tomato soup. The potato also came from Peru. Corn from Mexico. Some say Indian squaws first concocted the seafood chowders, famous in New England and gave the chowder recipes to our pilgrim mothers. Others say chowder comes from chow, the Chinese word for food, which crept into our language when Chinese seamen came aboard our Yankee merchant ships to cook. Still others point to the French word chaudière, meaning cauldron or kettle. In many fishing villages, the women folk prepared a community kettle to celebrate the safe return of the fleet. Into it went all manner of catch from the sea. Most agree that the most flavorful, nourishing part of any fish is its broth. The traditional seasonings, of course, and the common onion in the kettle work beautiful miracles. Pepper pot soup came from Philadelphia. There is no doubt among food historians about that. Way down yonder in New Orleans, the blues came to birth, and also the wonderful variety of gumbo. The colorful pageantry of food history tantalizes the gourmet. quickening tempo of living today permits all of us to indulge our creative fancies in the arts of cookery. Prepared and semi-prepared, the convenience foods of today can be used as the basis for new and imaginative dishes. Modern convenience foods save precious hours in preparation. The busy homemaker of today is free for the imaginative touches and little luxuries to excite the appetite. 
today she cooks creatively without having to start with raw ingredients without peeling picking plucking and scraping her way to the point where the arts come in she skips by the boredom and gets to the part of cooking that is fun to the part where she can create by using her individuality and her imagination today every meal can be something festive with modern convenience foods providing the base ingredients for dishes truly elegant even the snack can have culinary impact and glamour too universally love tomato soup vegetable soup chicken vegetable vegetable beef chicken noodle beef noodle chicken rice cream of chicken mushroom and on and on One of the greatest and most recent discoveries in the history of soup is, of course, condensed soup. The makings of a meal are preserved in a small, bright container, ready for the kettle with only water or milk to be added. Our modern shelves of plenty place a world of unusual blendings of flavors at our fingertips. No people in history ever fared as well as we do. No people on God's green earth ever enjoyed so much of the good things of life and in such enjoyable and nutritious variety. Our modern shopping baskets, swelling with abundance, topple the tall tales and all the romance of food lore from centuries past. Soup sets the appetite singing, for indeed the wealth of the earth and the wealth of the sea make it the perfect companion for hungry humanity. Soup is the secret of good living. Soup is the secret of good living. From the wealth of the earth and the wealth of the sea with spice and herbs so savory, a favorite food down through history. Soup is the secret of good living. Soup is the secret, the secret of good living.